Good evening and welcome. It is Thursday, January 9th, and it's 6.30 p.m. This is the organization meeting to establish the protocols for the coming year. Our regular first business meeting will be immediately following this meeting. And we are in the Berlin room at the administration building. So with that, we'll call the call to order the meeting. And would you please, uh, oh, we'll do the agenda, uh, the roll call last, won't we? Yeah, so I'm pleased to present uh, for the oath of office to our returning Kevin O'Brien and Mendy Patrick and welcoming Lakeisha Wise as a new board member. So we'll just do it alphabetically. So if you would join Emily at the front, we can do the swearing in. All three at the same time. Okay, we can do that. So you want to do that? Once or, or well, I think it's nice to do it singularly, yeah. but it's, you know, whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> Especially if you want to take photos. Constitution of the state of Ohio, Constitution of the state of Ohio. And, that I will faithfully and, impartially and I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education, discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education. in and for said Olentangy Local School District, in and for said Olentangy Local School District, of Delaware County, Ohio, Delaware County, Ohio, to the best of my ability and in accordance with laws, to the best of my ability and in accordance with law. Now in effect and hereafter to be enacted. Now in effect and hereafter to be enacted. During my continuance in said office. During my continuance in said office. Until my successor is chosen and qualified. Until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations. That's, Thank long. You. That's a lot longer than I. And then if you would. Uh, I think we should have done all three. Join Emily, please. Mm -hmm. No, I just. No, I can't sit. No, let's make this kind of formal. This is important. If you would please raise your right hand. I please state your name. I'm Mindy Patrick. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly I swear that I support I the Constitution of the United States? I thought that I support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education, discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education, in and for the said Owen Tangy Local School District, in and for the said Owen Tangy Local School District, in Delaware County, Ohio, in Delaware County, Ohio, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and in accordance with laws, in accordance with laws, now in effect, and hereafter to be enacted, and hereafter to be enacted, during my continuance in said office, during my continuance in said office, until my successor is chosen and qualified, until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and Dr. Wise. <laughs> Wise, well, we go. If you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I am Keisha Wise. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as a board of. As a member of the Board of Education, <laughs> discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education in and for the said Owen Tangy Local School District. In and for the said Owen Tangy Local, local School District. <laughs> in Delaware County, Ohio. In Delaware County, Ohio. To the best of my ability. The best of my ability. And in accordance with the laws. And in accordance with the laws. <coughs> now in effect. And hereafter to be enacted, and hereafter to be enacted, 
during my continuance in said office. During my continuance in said office. And until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome. And welcome. Thank you. Okay, so Emily, if you would, please call the roll. Absolutely. So, Mrs. Patrick, here. Mr. O'Brien, here. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel, here. And Ms. Weiss, here. And Mr. King, here. Thank you. And would you all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. An important item here on our agenda, and I'm pleased to present the election of the officers. And our first one would be the election of the board president for the year 2020. So may we have a nomination for said office? I nominate for the board president, uh, Mindy Patrick. And we'll any other motions? Nominations, I should say? No. Hearing none, uh, let's have a motion and a second to close the nominations, please. For a second. Did you get the motion? Okay. Emily, uh, take the roll. So Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Um, Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. And um, with that, we have a motion to approve the nomination of the election of Mendy. So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll, Emily. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Wendy. Mm -hmm. no. And um, we need the oath of office for the board president, please. I hope it's you. Please join me in front again. <coughs> Please raise your right hand. I state your name. I'm Mindy Patrick. Do you solemnly swear that I support the Constitution of the United States? Do you solemnly swear that I support the Constitution of the United States? And the Constitution of the State of Ohio? And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And that I will faithfully and impartially? And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as President of the Board of Education. Discharge my duties president of the Board of Education in and for the said Owen Hanji Local School District in and for the said Owen Hanji Local School District of Delaware County, Ohio of Delaware County, Ohio to the best of my ability to the best of my ability and in accordance with law in accordance with law now in effect now in effect and hereafter to be enacted and hereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office during my continuance <laughs> in said office. During my continuance in said office. <laughs> and until my successor is chosen and qualified. And until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations and welcome Thank Ms. you. Congratulations. And we're pleased then to have uh, nominations and election for vice president. So are there a uh, mo uh, nomination please for vice president? Please. Yes, you can. So, is that what you're going to do? I am. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to. Okay. Um, any other nominations? The motion is second to uh, to uh, close the nominations, please. So moved. Second. And Emily, please call the roll on closing nominations. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes, thank you. So uh, we need to have a motion to approve the election. So uh, moved. Okay. So moved. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. 
Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Congratulations, and uh, please uh, join Emily. I'm going to bring in the in case of discussion. I'm going to do the agenda by itself, just in case somebody's got a challenge. Oh, which I don't want to support. You. I, please schedule. state your name. Yeah, I, I, Julie Wagner Fiesel, do solemnly swear, solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as vice president, discharge my duties as vice president of the Board of Education, of the Board of Education, in and for the said Olin Tangy Local School District, in and for the said Olin Tangy Local School District of Delaware County, Ohio, of Delaware County, Ohio, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and in accordance with the laws, in accordance with the laws, now in effect and thereafter to be enacted now in effect and thereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office during my continuance in said office and until my successor is chosen and qualified and until my successor is chosen and qualified congratulations thank Welcome you to congratulations there'll be a test on that <laughs> <laughs> We have several board action items, and I'm going to put them into three groups. The first one is A, schedule the board meetings for 2020. So, could I have a motion and a second? Can I have to get, right. been approved the agenda. Oh, you're right. Thank you. We need to approve the agenda. We have a motion and a second for that, please. So moved. Second, please. Second. And call the roll. Thanks for catching that, lady. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So uh, the board action items, uh, the first one is, and I'll do this by itself in case somebody's got a last minute suggestion they'd like to make, but to approve the board meeting schedule for 2020. Your motion and a second, please. I will motion. And a second, please. Second. Any discussion? Okay, I'll just point out. quick it's question on the schedule. Yes, you may. Yep. Our next meeting, is it 6 p.m.? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Instead of 6.30? Yes, the coffee chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Um, thank you for accommodating that. There, actually, it's uh, volunteer training that we oh, need volunteer. to I'm help sorry. to go volunteer attend. And I know it's tough for you guys to get here from downtown, but that was the only night they had available. And remember, during the course of the year, if something comes up and you'd like to ask the board and administration to change the date, feel free to do so. We just have we have the protocol of time. Uh, all right, so I'd like to present items B, C, and D together, and that's establishing the board committees and approving their membership and leaders, uh, approve the board liaison to our, 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 our board committees, and establish district organizations like the PTOs, for instance. So I can have a motion and a second for that group. I'll motion. Second, please. Okay. Any discussion? I just have okay. a question. Is, um Will Roger Marks be serving on the facilities committee? That's my understanding. He was going to. And is, this, is, this no, is the facilities committee that yet? Or That's, that is a, it of, as of now. Doesn't mean it can't change in the course of the year, of course. Um, you know what? I'll give Roger a call just to be con confirmed okay. that. That's what Sharon was supposed to be doing. Any other questions, comments? Motion is second. Oh, we have that. Uh, yeah. Take that roll, please. So let me let me go back one step, though, and let me take the roll for A oh. as a separate item, and oh. then we'll take the roll for action items B through B, C, D. and D. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So for action for org item A, um, Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mrs. Weiss. Yes. And Mr. King. Yes. Thank you. Now we will go back and take um, roll or all the vote for org items B, C, and D, please. We have a first from Mrs. Patrick and a second from Mr. O'Brien. So Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mrs. Wagner-Fiesel? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. 
Thank you. And then finally, I'll uh, bring forward action items E, F, G, H, I, and J. This group are all authorizations for actions that will be taken by the board, the treasurer, the superintendent. It's, a, it's an annual uh, authorization for activities that we must all be responsible for. So can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. And that concludes board action items, so we would have a motion to second to adjourn the organization meeting. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Mindy? Oops. Oh, the Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to the organ. This is the business meeting. Mm -hmm. Following the organization. <laughs> Following the organization. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mrs. Hatfield, can I please have a call to order? Oh, that's me. I mean a roll call. <laughs> yes, please. Um, Mr. King. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel. Here. And Mrs. Weiss. Here. Thank you. Now we are to pledge, do the Pledge of Allegiance. Do Again. Do it twice. It's two it's, different meetings. It's two different meetings. Okay. Please <laughs> join me for our second <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> For one yeah. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Oops. Now I'll take a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I'll move. Thank you. Second. Call the roll, please. Or, Mr. King? Yes. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. And Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Thank you. Um, for the board president's report, it'll be brief since I've been the president about two minutes. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to thank Mr. O'Brien for his service as president last year and welcome Lakeisha. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Takes a little bit of getting used to, and so just throw up your hand if, if we move too fast. Um, this week, well, actually, this month, the last month or so, there's been a lot of conversation about um, school vouchers, and I know Mr. King attended a meeting, and I would like him to uh, bring us up to date. And Mrs. Fies Wagner Fiesel is very up to date on the voucher situation. Would you have? Do you have any comments? Mm -hmm. Um, you want me to go first? Yeah, uh, it's um, inserted at the last minute of the last state budget um, was an expansion of the Ed Choice Voucher Program. Um, in the past, we have not been um, a voucher school. Uh, this n new program is called the Ed Choice Expansion Voucher Program. And what happened when this amendment was inserted into the budget that nobody read, um, it makes um, additional buildings throughout the state of Ohio um, called um, eligible for vouchers based on their said performance on the state report card. Unfortunately, we have two buildings that have become voucher eligible um, because they received Ds in the progress area of their state report card um, for three years, they are not three consecutive years because they're fudging the numbers. And um, overall, these buildings are not failing schools by any means, but in these areas, in the area of progress, they are receiving Ds in the area of progress, which I think we've discussed progress before. We don't necessarily agree with how progress is calculated, but that's beside the point. They're so, actually overall letter grades of Bs. <clears throat> thank you. And the district as a whole receives an A mm -hmm. on the state report card. Mm -hmm. But now, according to the state, we have two quote-unquote failing schools 
in which the students who reside in those attendance areas are now eligible to receive vouchers um, in the amount of $4,650, and they can take that money and use it at a uh, private, mostly religious-based school um, that accepts vouchers. Not all, not all private schools accept vouchers. Um, we do have several in the area that do accept vouchers. I'm not naming the schools, and I'm not naming the vouchers that they can be used at because I don't agree with this program. Um, it has increased the voucher program um, so much so that districts like ours in Dublin and Hilliard and Worthington, um, Westerville, have all of these schools now that are voucher schools <laughs> and the money that the students are eligible to get to take to these private schools comes from our treasury. So that $4,650 that they get, and remember, we only get $640 per pupil from the state, is coming from local property taxes. So your money is now going, or could go, to fund pri students attending private schools. Um, there is a lot of talk, and there was a talk today, that there's going to be a fix because multiple school districts will have a tremendous, it'll have a tremendous impact on their bottom line. I mean, we already lose money to the state. Everybody knows that. We've discussed that ad nauseum. And now we have the potential to lose more money um, because of this um, falsely expanded program. Again, I insert a lot of my um, <coughs> own feelings on this. But uh, today, this, uh, the um, speaker, or no, the Senate President, Larry Ophoff, has said he is promising a fix by February 1st, because that's when the program goes into effect. Um, and it has to be done legislatively, because they're the ones who made this mistake. Um, and Senator Peggy Lehner, who's chair of the Senate Education Committee, agrees something must be done. Um, the Speaker of the House, uh, Larry Householder, whose district would be severely impacted, now he's waking up and saying, yes, we have to fix this because my school districts will be impacted as well. And so what we'll probably see is that last week of January inserted into some education bill that's already been introduced and already had hearings will be a fix to this program. Uh, we don't know what that fix will be, uh, but again, nobody on this board believes we have any failing schools in our school district. Um, and the expansion of this program um, has been done falsely. Yes. So I two additional comments on that. The most, I think the most egregious thing about it is in that expansion was in the previous law, you had to actually be attending a failing school exactly. and try to attend a failing, mm -hmm. you know, and try at that school and fail mm -hmm. at, at, at that alleged, you know, at alleged failing school before you could apply and be eligible for a voucher. And while it had to be district-wide instead of just school-wide, that, that was one issue. Now, they don't even have to have ever attended. So kids who have never been in our school district, who have never even been at the two schools that are allegedly uh, on the list, um, can just call up and get this, apply and, and get this voucher. And so there, it's an elementary school and a middle school, but because high school kids live in that attendance area, they too can go and get that voucher, even though they never attended that school. And that voucher is good for the whole career of the right. student. So it is just, and, and, and with all due respect to the legislators who, who, who did put that bill in place uh, in the 11th hour, the governor's office could have read that bill <laughs> as closely as they read the fair funding bill that would have doubled our school funding and perhaps line item vetoed that bill like they line item vetoed the fair funding bill. And the original premise for state vouchers was that students who are attending truly failing schools could take the money and, and use it in a school that hopefully is not failing. It was started in the Cleveland area. Um, it has been expanded, it ballooned now out of control so that it isn't even, and the original vouchers were for um, students who hit a certain poverty level. So, um, but now it's been expanded so much so out of control that there are over 400 school districts, or 400 individual schools in the state that will be impacted. So nearly every school district in the state has at least one school that is now considered failing. But they're not trying to dismantle public education? N never. <laughs> so Dave attended a, a meeting in a neighboring school district, and you had a good comment on, on yeah. how the superintendent 
explained it. Yeah, I did that on Monday evening, and, and what I witnessed in this uh, presentation by the superintendent and the uh, finance, the treasurer, was it was very much like a coffee track chat, chat that Mark and Emily have been doing and will continue to do. So in essence, that's what it was. They did it. They had a nice presentation, and not only about the law like you just talked about, the act itself, as well as the financial burden on that school district that, that would result. But he wrote, he had several comments during his presentation, and I'm going to share a couple of them. I thought he did a nice uh, couple of jobs with this. He pointed out that a legislator had said to him, and I think it was more than one, they do not want to hear from whining superintendents. And we had heard that before, <coughs> probably two years ago, but in a different context right. about who was doing the whining. Mm -hmm. And so that was very consistent from what we had heard before. <clears throat> he talked about the, the system not being aligned with the needs of students. Uh, this one was really irritating to him, that they have students that come into their district, you know, from kindergarten, who just simply aren't prepared for school. And he said, we do a great job of bringing those kids up to that third, grading, third grade level. And instead of being rewarded for the effort, we get penalized mm -hmm. because they haven't met that third grade reading standard. So they get penalized instead of a nice little pat on the back. Um, he re referred to the changes in the law as tweaking, not fixing the law. And this was my favorite. He made a great allegory. It was a reference to the business world. So the state of Ohio says, I'm going to take some money from your business, and I'm going to give it to Mindy's business so that she can compete with you. I thought that was an excellent comment. So it was, it was, I was glad I went. It was interesting to hear. Steve, did they share any numbers on how they could be impacted? Yeah, they did, but I didn't copy into that because it was specific was to their district. Was it pretty staggering or? Not as bad as what ours could be, but it wasn't. Oh, no, no, they have 14, they have 14 schools on the list. Oh, you're right. And, yeah, yeah, and if you talk worse. about their kids who go to, they have, I think, a higher percentage of kids who go to parochial schools in general. And I mean, St. Paul's right there. Right. So, you know, that's a pretty big Catholic elementary school that accepts vouchers and. <coughs> And just so people it's, watching at home know this, we are not, it, we have nothing against parochial schools. My daughter started there. My oldest one went through second grade. But in my church bulletin was an advertisement that these schools listed all in Delaware County are now voucher schools. So parents, be sure to talk to your principal, get the voucher, and come to my school. And, and it listed the school that will accept the vouchers. That I have a, a, a real problem with. While well, they're getting twice as much state funding as Right, them. because they get $1,376 from the state. Anyway, we get 640 per pupil. So I'm a little mad about this situation. <laughs> we all are. And, I think <laughs> and hopefully a, there will be a fix. Let's hope. Well, soon. We'll keep you posted. And that's a good segue into a kind of, you know, the, the, the activity of the board going forward we are on the March ballot um, that will be where the energy and focus is in the, <coughs> the next couple of board meetings I think we will have a discussion on you know the big picture of what things look like if we don't pass I think that um, we've done an excellent job accounting for every single dime that we will spend if this passes and what we will do with it and how it will benefit our students um, we now have to do our due diligence and take a look at, if it doesn't pass, what that looks like and share that with the community. Um, that's all I have for the President's report. Any other comments by my fellow board members? Okay, well then let's, we have a presentation tonight. Oh, we have the presentation of the Auditor of State Award with distinction, Victoria Hubner, did I say it correctly? Great. Well, welcome. She is from the Central Regional Liaison. She is the Central Regional Liaison from the Auditor from the state of the State of Ohio. So, welcome. It is really a mouthful, and the swearing in kind of did me yeah. in tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I've met a handful of you um, at different things, and so. 
uh, if I hadn't gotten the chance to meet. Hello. Uh, as <coughs> mentioned, I'm the regional liaison for Auditor of State Keith Faber. Um, so I'm the customer service person. I've chatted with Emily a handful of times over my year of service now. Um, and so it is my honor to be here tonight on behalf of the auditor to present Olentangy Local School District with the Auditor of State Award with distinction. It's important to note that this award puts Olentangy in a very select group. Out of the nearly 6,000 entities that we audit, only three to 5% are even eligible to receive this award. So it's very special that you have received it. This award represents the hard work of every school employee who strives each day to achieve accounting excellence. And I wanna recognize the Board of Education members and the superintendent that have done an excellent job accounting for every dollar here in the district. I specifically want to recognize the treasurer, Emily Hatfield, and her staff for their outstanding leadership, professionalism, and commitment to fiscal integrity. And so again, congratulations on behalf of Auditor of State Keith Faber. Thank you. Emily, how many of these have you received? So this is our seventh year in a row that we have received this award. Um, and it, it's a great honor. Our staff is amazing in making sure that they are following the Ohio Revised Code, following our auditing practices and standards that are issued by um, Auditor Faber's office, and helping our staff to make sure that they understand the why behind how we have to account for our public dollars and what it does for us when we win these types of awards. So we're very grateful, and I would like to thank our staff. Um, Missy is, yeah, Missy's here. is back here, mm -hmm. our assistant treasurer is here, Mrs. Griffith, um, and on the be behalf of the rest of our staff as well. They work really hard to make sure that we can um, receive this award year after year, so thank you, we appreciate it. Well, on behalf of the entire board, we appreciate mm -hmm. all your hard work to you and your team. Um, it's not an easy feat. I've recently done fund accounting and it's messy. <laughs> and so congratulations to your entire team. Thank you. And we thank you for that. Um, Mr. Ray, for superintendent's report. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome everyone, great to see you. Dr. Wise. Welcome your family, looks like your family showed up. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, congratulations, thank you for sharing her with us. It'll be, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, good evening everyone. I know the line, it's my fault. Maybe it's not on. Off, on, off. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There you go. Uh, as, Ms., uh, as Mrs. Patrick already mentioned, um, you know, we have a March ballot issue, March 17th, uh, 2020. Uh, we have started um, the process of providing the community with information uh, for the ballot issue, all the necessary facts so people can make an informed decision. Uh, Mrs. Hatfield and I started off on the coffee chat circuit and the meeting with different groups throughout the district to provide information. I think we had eight events this week. Um, I did do a little quick count up uh, before um, March 1st. We'll have, uh, I think we have 65 on the book, so we'll start getting some more scheduled into, into March, I think, before we'll go right up to the wire to inform the community as best as possible so that we can uh, continue our path uh, here in Old Tangy. So, thank you. I just want to highlight uh, this project, uh, another great example of living the mission, the 1619 project. Mr. Schof, who was our uh, teacher of the year last year at Orange, from Old Tangy Orange Middle School, he created a museum that's inspired by uh, the 1619 project, which marked, which marked 400 years since the beginning of the slave trade. And um, that uh, kids are having a great experience with that project. They created materials for the museum, videos, poetry, drawings, and quotes. and. Um, they're gonna be on display at our one community conference on February 8th, so it's gotten a lot of good attention and I'm really proud of Mr. Schof and that project, so. Launch. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've seen the headlines on this, but we have again some 
pioneers uh, making the headlines because they are truly pioneers. They are uh, they started a girls wrestling team, and girls wrestling has, is actually wrestling is a co-ed sport in Ohio. So um, they are part of the wrestling team. They compete. Um, they could girls could compete against boys if there aren't another girls team, but they are competing against uh, other girls teams and in all girls tournaments. Uh, as it says here, a total of 459 girls wrestling in Ohio, representing 60 teams. But um, Orange probably, in my estimation, may have the most kids participating, and they're doing really, really well. So actually, we've got kids from every school now participating, girls from every school participating in wrestling. So just uh, again, just you know, people ask me what what, what can we add? What you know, if the levy passes, what are we going to add? And I always say, what can what more could we add? But Every time somebody comes up with another idea, and off we go, and we find an adult to support them, and and uh, they have at it. So, um, as I mentioned, the one community conference is February eighth. Uh, it's a six year for our conference. It brings together people from uh, not only our district but all uh, across Ohio to learn more about equity and inclusion. Um, we're very uh, Jack with the keynotes. I, I lost the name in my head. You know the keynote? Matthew. Matthew Kay, and he is area is. Um, he's a teacher from Philadelphia whose uh, specialty is talking with students about race. There you go. So again, that's been uh, we've been really proud of the participation and encourage people, the entire community, to uh, come to the one community conference. And I'm starting another new little tradition. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. O'Brien for his years of service as the board, or last year's service as the Board of Education President. Previously, he served in 2013, 14, 15, and then 19. And it's especially meaningful to me because Mr. O'Brien, you know, remember, you were the Board President that led the board when I got chosen to be superintendent. So I'll always be. Don't hold that against me. That. I'm going to keep talking over you before you have an opportunity to make a comment. <laughs> Thanks. But on behalf of us, <laughs> present you with an honorary token, Thank you very gavel. Much. Now, if you do come back and be board president, all you're getting is a new plaque on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. So, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, And here we go, just the last set of important dates. Uh, it's report card time. Uh, a couple of no, uh, no school dates here coming up, and then highlighting our our one community conference so with that I'll take any questions and one community is sponsored by uh, the Old Education Foundation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dave, for that Very good. Thank you. Well, I'll just take it. All right. Very good. Thank you. Nice. Oh, I was put I was updating my calendar. Oh. <laughs> This is Mrs. Patrick, Mr. Wright's not here, so you're you're in a safe I know, space I'm, right I'm, now. I am. <laughs> the one who's critical of very <laughs> of us being human. Mm -hmm. yes. But yeah. we approved the agenda. So. There you go. <laughs> I missed that last year. Um, would you please share your treasurer's report? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so we have a few things going on. Um, as you can tell, we finished up our fiscal year 2019 audit. Um, that's a big project for our team in terms of hours that we are required to pull information and documentation and have conversations with our audit team um, to supply them with everything they need to go through our reports. Um, so we're happy to be able to convey to the community that we continue to strive for excellence in that area. And we are beginning our um, fiscal year 21 budget process. Mm -hmm. uh, we've put together our timeline letter. Um, our budgetary accountant, Madison, has put that together for us. Um, and I believe he sent out the, temp the letter today to let the buildings and staff know that that process will be beginning soon. Mm -hmm. um, we'll issue the templates at the end of the month and then give them a month to work through their budgets. Um, we'll also be working with our human resources department and chief operations director, Mr. Meyer, to look at the staff budgeting. Um, and make, um, you know, we're going into the process to make assumptions um, business as usual, but of course we will make sure that we account for uh, the March ballot item as we move forward to take that information into the May forecast update. So we'll give updates as we go through that process, but we're in the beginning phases of that for fiscal 21 already. 
Um, and with that, I will take any questions that you might have um, for our department. Thank you. Good. Mrs. Hatfield, do we have any public participation? No, we do not. Mr. Rake, would you like to present? I'm sorry. I thought, I thought there, somebody there turned something in. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss it? It was withdrawn. Oh, it was withdrawn? Okay. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Rafe, would you like to? Do we yes. Any, okay. Present your <laughs> superintendent action items. Yes, ma'am. I will present superintendent action items A through D for approval. I'll move. I'll second. Please call the roll. Mr. King. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mrs. Wagner Fiesel. Yes. And Mrs. Weiss. Yes. Thank you. Um, now I will take a motion to move into executive session as permitted by section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code to consider the employment of public employees. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Mrs. Hatfield, please call the roll. That Mrs. I'm sorry. That was Mrs. Mrs. Wise. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm sorry. Okay. So Mrs. Wagner Fiesel? Yes. Mrs. Weiss? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. And Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Thank you. We will now move into executive session and we will only re-enter, we'll come back to this room just to adjourn. Our next Oh, our next board meeting is the 23rd yes. of January at 6 p.m. in this location. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you need to move. Oh, oh, sure. We don't have to adjourn yet. Not no. yet. We'll come back. Yep. All right. Second. And so, Mr. King? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. I'm not doing the right order. Mrs. Fiesel should be yes. first. Mrs. Wise? Yes. Mrs. Patrick. So first is, okay, we're adjourned. Okay.